G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today, we start on this front end. So, if you've never done king pins before, you're going to get one of these kits. You're going to get one of these bushes. And then you're going to try and slide the bush over the king pin. And you're going to go, hang on a minute, it doesn't fit. They don't fit. And you're like, why? It should fit, shouldn't it? No, it doesn't fit. They're a specialist fit mat. They're not something that you can do at home without the proper tool. The reason they don't fit is because the outside of this is an interference fit with this guy. So they've got to go in tight. And what happens the inside diameter gets smaller. So what that means, the inside diameter has to be reamed out with a reaming tool to make it the same size as one of these. So we'll get to that when we get to it. But yeah, it's not something that you can do at home without the right tools. So let me show you what we do. So first things first, we've got to knock these old guys out. We used to have tools to do that, but it's been a long time. So I'll see what I've got. Sometimes a socket will fit. Sometimes you just got to knock it out with a punch. I used to have drifts at the right size. I used to do heaps of um, F100s, and I used to do heaps of early Holdens. I think it's the go. What do we do with my hammer? Look at that. So when you put them back in, it's pretty much just as easy, but see the hole there? That's for your grease nipple. And there's a hole on these. So you've got to make sure that when you put them in, you line the hole up so when you grease it, it gets grease. Simple as that. But, like I said before, it's not going to fit. It's got to be reined out. So I just chucked the steering column in because I wanted to work out my intake. Right hand drive cars on Model A's really limit what you can do in the intake department because the steering column is in the way. It's a pain in the butt. But you can see where your exhaust and intake ports are and the columns just there, so it doesn't give you a lot of room to play. I do have a cutting plan for a special intake and I'm going to keep trying to uh, work it out, but it's just going to have to loop around this steering column. You know, it'd be really easy just to stick my old intake on. This is one I had on before the Anson, which is just a standard one turned upside down. That's a Stromberg carburetor, and I could put something old school on the top of that. But I really want the um, intake and the exhaust to be a real feature of this vehicle. So, yeah, it's got to be a bit special. You know, when a young man comes around a date, someone's daughter and the dad goes, what are your intentions? Well, in this case, Henry Ford's the dad. This is the daughter. I'm the young man. And these are my intentions. But I'll show you more of that when I get to it. Mail call! It's just a little one this time. You know how we were talking about putting a traditional and um, period correct? Well, here we go one-handed again. Um, oh, this is hard. Let me put this down. Hang on. All right, so... Something that people overlook is a wiring harness. So I've got myself some cloth electrical tape to cloth wrap my wiring. So I'm gonna get myself some uh, cloth wrap wiring and I'm also gonna wrap it in the cloth electrical tape. So yeah, just a little finer detail. People are gonna start calling me a restorer soon. So we're talking about reamers. Here's what you need to do kingpins. These are reaming tools, all different sizes, and basically they're a cutter. So they, um, they're adjustable and they'll cut your bush out to the right diameter. Only thing is you've got to be very careful you don't go oversized because then you have to buy new bushes. So basically, the more you wind these down, the bigger they get. So, you just do a little bit at a time. Thank you. 
So really, it's as simple as that. I've got a fairly snug fit in there now, so I'm happy with that. That'll do me. It's got to do all four. So it's assembly time. I hope you can see because my electricity just went out. I've got a big windstorm today and I'm guessing some power lines have gone down. But let's put this thing together. There you go, kingpin in. She's uh, nice and firm, there's no up and down movement, and um, we're ready to do the other side, but I won't bore you with that. Yay, power! Oh. So my kingpins are done. It's a pain in the butt with no power, but I have a cordless drill, which the battery is charged, and I have a selection of front drums, which I'm going to use this one, and this one, because they're the best out of the board that I have, and they are both right hand thread, which is also a bonus. Fancy! So I need this wishbone, and off camera, the other day, I managed to get that side out. <laughs> But this side was being absolutely ridiculously difficult. So I'm gonna have another crack at that because I need it, I need it. I need this one. This is the only spare one I have. So, and I'm not taking it out of the mongrel because that's a roller. I managed to move it just a little bit the other day and um, it's been soaking for about a week. So I wanna hit it with the heat and see if we can get it out. While that's um, warming up, I'm going to pinch this drag link because it's better than the other one. It's perfectly straight. The other one's got a bit of a bend in it. And um, we'll get that out now. And the um, good thing about these tie rod ends, you know what, this is 90 years old, but they're fully adjustable. So when they wear, you just adjust them. I can put them back in and have them perfect. It's pretty cool. And you know what? The only reason they change that to um, non-serviceable ones is because they weren't making any money out of us. There's nothing wrong with these and you could still run them in today's vehicles and uh, be perfectly safe. But they like to make money on worn out bits and pieces, don't they? Anyhow, they're not making money out of me. Ninety years old. 90 years old. Sometimes you absolutely destroy these things getting them out and it's often why the ends of them are flared over really bad. But this one, whew, this is why some people just oxy them out. I don't want to do that. The ideal method would be with a uh, hydraulic press, but I don't have one of those. So it's the old school way, unfortunately. So, I'm going to let that soak for a couple more days before I have another crack at that. Maybe tomorrow even. Power's back on. Kingpins are done. Drums are all sorted out. Everything is clean and ready to bolt back together, except I'm missing the perches. Now, the perches are on their way. But I don't really want to put it all back together until I've got them. It's easier on the car. It's lighter. I do have a bad back. So, as you can see, the place is a mess. I have been busy. 
I have been having a crack. So what I was going to do is try and have this a roller, drag it out, give the place a sweep out and a clean out. But I'm kind of, I don't know, am I at a, a grinding halt? Sort of. I'm just going to um, clean up, have a rethink, have a relook, and see what we can do. The power's just gone off again, which is a pain in the butt. I'm going to clean this place up, and I'm going to call it quits on this video. See ya.